Last week when I uploaded my video documenting my discovery of Pappy Van Poodle, I expected that a couple of things would happen. I, I knew that the Google results would probably change going from zero to at least one result. What I could never have predicted was the explosive reaction to that video, the countless pieces of, of fan art, uh, a change.org petition to get Pappy into Smash Brothers. There were parody videos. There's a whole Discord server, there's a subreddit, there's some pornography. Really everything that you could ever think of to make about Pappy Van Poodle is now being made, which is mind-blowing to watch happen in real time. Pappy Van Poodle, you were forgotten by the world. C'est Pappy Van Poodle. Ou en tout cas, la première personne qui l'a mise sur internet est Nick Robinson. And while obviously it's funny to see this character kind of raised up as this important figure in gaming history, it's also been just straight up touching to see the internet rally in support of this guy, this guy, <laughs> Pappy Van Poodle, uh, who really did spend years and years and years wallowing in almost complete obscurity. One of my favorite things that's happened over the past week is it was pointed out to me that if you go into the 3DS eShop right now and look at their best sellers list, uh, Rusty's Real Deal Baseball has crept back into the, the top few listings, which is crazy to me. Uh, it's a game from 2015, like that should not be happening. And just to remind you where we started, this is a game whose community initially was so small that I, I think I've consumed virtually every single piece of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball content that existed on the internet up until a week ago. I'm, and there was surprisingly little of it. On YouTube, that you'd see a small handful of reviews here and there, one of which was by a much younger looking version of me. Uh, there was a Let's Play some guy did with no commentary, and then you'd occasionally see these very charming uploads from passionate, diehard Rusty's Real Deal Baseball super fans, uh, including this video from 2015 of some kid going by the name Mustachioed Bear, explaining his theory of why Rusty was definitely gonna be in the next Smash Brothers game. Well, look at that right there. It's Rusty. Rusty is the face of free to start games. Look at him. Free to start, it shows Rusty. It doesn't show Pokemon. It doesn't show that dumb badge thing. It doesn't show Pokemon Picross. It shows Rusty Slugger. And that's why he has the biggest chance of being a Smash Bros. Everyone's laughing at me right now. Tomorrow, we're going to find out who's the one that's going to be laughing. He made a few videos about that, if I'm not mistaken. It's been genuinely beautiful to watch this saga unfold. Um, but one of the side effects of the outpouring of support for Pappy Online has been that when I go back and watch my original video with about a week and a half between me and that upload, I can't help but feel like a major piece of the story is now missing. Uh, everything that happened afterwards is such a big part to me of the Pappy Van Poodle story. It's, it's as much a part of it as my initial discovery was. So uh, it feels like some of this stuff should be documented in some way. So that's part of the purpose of this video. Starting the day I uploaded that video, there was this immediate groundswell, and it wasn't just a groundswell of fan creations, it was also a groundswell of all the other Rusty's Real Deal baseball fans on the internet coming together in one place. And together with the help of many of those fans, uh, we were able to dive way deeper into the history of this underdog character and also uncover even more Pappy lore than I ever thought humanly possible. So the last time we spoke, I claimed that my video was, as far as I could tell, the very first time Pappy Van Poodle had ever been documented on the internet. And that was true, at least as far as the English-speaking surface-level internet was concerned. But there is a part of this story that I, I fully missed the first time. See, after publishing my initial video, all these other Rusty fans began pouring out of the woodwork, and one of them was a Twitter user who went by the name MB. Um, and MB came to me saying, that years ago, he swore that he saw an instance of somebody revealing Pappy's existence of the world on Nintendo's Miiverse service. If you don't know what Miiverse is, it was essentially a sort of closed internet uh, that you could access through the Nintendo 3DS and the Wii U. And this seemed pretty plausible to me because Miiverse had what must have been the highest density of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball fans ever gathered in one place until now. Um, and it also had this built-in feature on the 3DS that allowed you to upload screenshots of whatever you were playing. So to me, Miiverse seemed like exactly the place where Pappy would have initially been documented. But as I'm sure many of you know, the tragic part of this is that Nintendo decided to shut down Miiverse back in 2017 and in so doing, they took thousands and thousands of posts with them. But I really felt like we needed to answer this possibility. I wanted proof, like somebody sort of half remembering seeing something on Miiverse 
wasn't enough for me. I wanted concrete, definitive evidence that somebody somewhere tried to tell the world about Pappy years before I did. And that was when I remembered some very incredible people running a service called Archiverse went out of their way to archive Miiverse in the, the weeks before Nintendo shut it down. And while I don't know how thorough their archiving was or how far back it went or what percentage of content they'd backed up, I figured it was worth a shot to look there. So that's exactly what I did. I, I found the Rusty's Real Deal Baseball Miiverse community in their archives and proceeded to scroll through literally hundreds of posts from the Rusty's Real Deal Baseball Miiverse. And I found nothing. Frustrated, I replied to MB saying, hey, um, there's this thing called Archiverse. Uh, I looked through it and tried to find this post you're talking about, but maybe I'd missed something, but you should feel free to take a look for yourself. And a little while later, he got back to me with some bad news. He told me that like me, he had searched through on Miiverse, but hadn't been able to find anything. He also had a theory, which was on Miiverse, there was this function that let you mark posts as spoilers. And it appeared that Archiverse hadn't archived any of the posts with spoiler tags. This was a bummer, obviously, because I wanted that conclusive evidence, but at that point I felt like we'd done all the digging that could be done, and I would just have to take MB on his word that he'd seen Pappy once before in the ancient ruins of the bizarre Nintendo micro-internet that had been reduced to ash by Nintendo in 2017. But a few hours later, after I had completely given up all hope on this whole Miiverse angle, another tweet from MB rolled in. Quote, I found it. Attached to that tweet was an image, and there it was. February 2017, just nine months before Nintendo shuttered Miiverse, there was a post from a user named David, aka Charizard300, and it laid out in perfect detail how exactly to awaken Pappy. Uh, he even included a screenshot of Pappy in this Miiverse post. This was straight up irrefutable evidence that somebody was trying to get the word out about Pappy years before I did. While my video might have popularized Pappy and gotten him his first Google results, uh, Charizard 300's post absolutely deserves credit for being the first one to bring Pappy to light, even if it was just within this sort of walled garden of Miiverse. Except, what if he didn't? I mean, realistically, February 2017 feels awfully late for Pappy to have first been captured. I mean, remember, by that time, Rusty's Real Deal Baseball had already been out for over three years in some territories. Surely there was some evidence that somebody had encountered Pappy earlier than this, right? For a while, I thought this was it. And right when I had started to accept that this Miiverse post, three years after the game came out, was the first instance of Pappy, I saw a comment on my video that changed everything. A user going by the name Ricardo Webb left the following comment, quote, I remember when CWC's Nintendo purchases got discovered, and it turns out they paid the full amount for each minigame. People laughed at the fact that Chris didn't seem to get the haggling aspect, but perhaps Chris was just a fan of the unsung hero Pappy? This comment stopped me dead in my tracks. For those who don't know, CWC is an acronym for Christine Weston Chandler, often referred to colloquially as Chris Chan on the internet. You might know her from her creation Sonichu or from her very vocal protests when Sega changed Sonic the Hedgehog's arm colors from tan to blue when they released Sonic Boom. Now, Christine is a truly legendary figure on the internet and has been for over a decade now, so the possibility that she discovered Pappy before I did completely shook me to my core. And after reading this comment, I immediately began looking into this possibility uh, which led me to a list of eShop purchases that Christine had made, allegedly leaked back in 2015 by a Nintendo employee. And after scrolling for a while, there it was. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball presented with the additional information that Christine had, quote, bought every single minigame. I gulped. It, it was beginning to seem possible. If, if Chris Chan had purchased every minigame at full price, as this comment suggested, that would mean that she had definitely encountered Pappy, not just once, but six separate times. And knowing that this must have happened in 2015 at the latest, that would mean that CWC was the first individual on record to ever encounter Pappy Van Poodle. <laughs> Frantically, I kept looking for information, but it, it soon became clear that uh, I had hit a dead end. I searched everywhere I could online, but this list and the caveat that she'd purchased every minigame was just straight up all the information that existed about Chris Chan's relationship to Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. So, very quickly, I realized that there was only one way I was going to be able to clear this mystery up, and that was to reach out to Christine and simply ask her directly. 
And with the help of a YouTuber friend of mine named Kopitz, who lives in Christine's general area, uh, I was able to set up a meeting and he went to Christine's house, put her on FaceTime with me, and I asked her point blank. Ow, ow, ow. Uh-oh. Oh, well, all right. Hello. Hello. Right. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Nick. Hi, Nick. Um, so I, I'm, I'm making a video about a 3DS game called Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Did, yeah, the real deal. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I played it. Oh, awesome. It was, yeah, free to play, but yet pay to play also. Yeah. I, lost, I remember playing a bunch of mini games within that and making a deal with Rusty. So, uh, th there was a, I, I made a YouTube video recently about this hidden character in the game. Um, hmm. It's. It turns out that uh, you remember, like there was like a haggling thing where you could negotiate with Rusty. Oh yeah. Did you? Like, <laughs> You're not making me lose my whole profit margin. You make me go below even breaking even. So I somebody told me that you had played the game and that when when you had negotiated with Rusty, did you did you haggle with him? You haggled the money down. Yeah, way down. Oh, got it. Um, I'm trying to track down who originally um, f discovered this character for the first time. And somebody in a YouTube comment said that you had encountered this character or that you didn't negotiate. But I guess that's not true. Yeah, not quite. Sorry. It's okay. What are your like main memories of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball? The back and forth between me and a wabbit. Because Rusty was a wabbit. It's right. just like saying that. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna I I actually, you know, I, you might be thinking of Nintendo Badge Arcade because that was a rabbit. I think Rusty was actually a dog. Oh, okay. Well, my mistake. It's okay. But yeah. uh, just to be clear, you did you did haggle with Rusty and you did negotiate with him to get those prices down. Oh yes, yes, yes. Got it. Um, thank you so much, Christine. It's, <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, nice talking with you, Nick. Now, after I spoke with Christine, she even went on to Twitter to further confirm this information. So that settled it. The, the comment, they either misremembered or were mistaken. It, it was misinfo, and CWC had never before met Pappy Van Poodle, which meant that the mystery was unsolved, and I had to continue on my search to find who first discovered Pappy. It was around that time that it dawned on me that maybe I was too focused on American fans of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. I mean, the game came out in only two regions, North America and Japan, but Japan actually had an eight month head start to play this game before America did. And so it would stand to reason that in that window of time, somebody somewhere had encountered Pappy and maybe even documented it. And that actually brings me to one of the most common questions you guys had about Pappy, and it's a really good one. What about in the Japanese version of the game. And it was something that I too had wondered when working on the original video, but I just but I just simply lacked the resources to answer. Did Pappy even exist at all in the Japanese version? And if so, what did they call him? And, and even more crucially, what did he look like? And if that last question seems weird, there's a reason I'm asking it. Here's why it's worth asking. It, it turns out in Japan, there were a lot of things that were very different about Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Uh, for one, the name of the game. Over there, it was not called Rusty's Anything. It was called Darumeshi Sports Shop, uh, with Darumeshi being the Japanese name for Rusty. And while changing a character's name during localization is extremely common, what's not as common is completely redesigning the entire physical appearance of your protagonist. And that's exactly what they did. See, Rusty has a totally different character design in Japan. And one of the only pieces of physical Rusty's merch that seems to exist is in this sticker book that I bought. I was in a Japanese bookstore and I bought a sticker book based on Nintendo Badge Arcade, one of my other 3DS favorites. Uh, and in that sticker book, I discovered the Japanese design of Rusty. And yeah, just completely and utterly different. Um, and while Nintendo has never outright stated why they completely redesigned this character, the general consensus online seems to be that Darumeshi's original appearance could be misinterpreted as a little bit insensitive in the West. And that begged the question to me, what about Pappy's face? Like, his name is almost certainly different in the Japanese version, but what about his appearance? Now, miraculously, not long after publishing my video, I heard from a game hacker and translator by the name of Samuel Messner, who reached out to me over Twitter to let me know that after watching my video, he had elected to hunt down and dig through a Japanese ROM for Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, and had found the exact information I was looking for.
It turns out that, yes, Pappy Van Poodle has a separate name in Japan, and that name is Inuzo Toipu, which, according to Samuel, is a multi-layered Japanese pun. Inuzo is a classically old man-sounding name, says Samuel, but it starts crucially with Inu, which is the Japanese word for dog. And then his last name, Toipu, is actually a shortened version of the Toy Poodle breed, which is what Pappy Van Poodle is and is an even more delightful pun than the first. Interestingly, while Pappy's face is the same in the Japanese version of the game as it is in the American version, his outfit is completely different. And there's actually a narrative reason for that. See, it turns out that Pappy's relationship with Rusty in the Japanese game is completely different than that relationship in the American release. Now, as you know, in the North American version of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, Pappy is characterized as sort of a neighbor slash businessman slash mentor to Rusty. But according to Samuel, the Japanese version describes him as the boss of a nearby shoten guy, which is a sort of Japanese shopping street. And in the Japanese version of the game, uh, upon being first introduced to Pappy, or I guess I should say Inuzo, uh, the game describes him as Inuzo Toipu, head of the local shopping street and purveyor of gardening supplies. As if that wasn't enough, Samuel actually helped me get my hands on the Japanese version of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, which was a delight because there were so many more changes than I ever could have imagined. For one, while Rusty eats donuts, his Japanese counterpart Darumeshi eats hard-boiled eggs. Um, he even has a custom egg unpeeling animation that is totally exclusive to the Japanese game. There is no way to see this animation in the American version, so if you're dying to see a cartoon dog unpeel a hard-boiled egg, uh, Americans are just out of luck, unless you watch this video, I guess. And the more I played of the Japanese version, the more changes I noticed. For instance, I noticed that Darumeshi's kids are drastically more snot-nosed than Rusty's are. Um, I noticed that this lucky cat on Rusty's back shelf was swapped out by Nintendo of America with this shockingly detailed bat and baseball, I guess, statue? That if you zoom in, you'd never know this on a 400 pixel by 240 pixel 3DS screen, but if you zoom in on it, it is drastically higher resolution than anything else in Rusty's shop, which cracked me up. Now here's where I stop and tell you that I have a lot of obscure facts to share about both the Japanese and American versions of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, uh, but in the interest in getting on with the point of this video, uh, I'll spare you all that and just tell you that I've set up a dedicated Twitter account called Rusty's Real Deal Based. Think of it as like Super Mario Broth, but instead of being about Mario, it is exclusively about the 3DS eShop game Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. And I have loaded this account with all sorts of obscure trivia and other findings that I've uncovered from one of my favorite 3DS games ever. No pressure, but it's there if you want to follow it. There's a link in the description. Anyways, back to Japan. Now, we, we now have in our possession the Japanese name for Peppy Van Poodle, as a reminder, Inuzo Toipu. Which means that now we're able to Google Inuzo Toipu in quotation marks to see if that exact phrase was ever mentioned online in Japan or anywhere. And amazingly, while the English name Pappy was mentioned zero times on the entire public facing internet, there actually were a small handful of mentions of the Japanese Pappy out there. Now the oldest mention surfaced by Google came from a blogger by the name of Chico who had written a small guide in the Japanese website Wazap. Or what Wazap. Wazap. And in this post, which is dated February 6, 2014, reminder that is well ahead of any other Pappy discovery we've found to date, uh, Chico mentioned Pappy. Chico mentioned Inuzo Toipu. And if that wasn't enough, Chico even included a blurry cell phone photograph of Inuzo Toipu in action. After seeing this page, I was, I was pretty much ready right there to award Chico the crown for the first person to truly document some version of Pappy Van Poodle. I mean, we, we, I'd seen everything on Google, I had seen everything on American Google, on Japanese Google. Uh, this had to be it. And, and 2014 is, again, drastically earlier than any of our other prior discoveries, right? So Chico was the winner. But just when it seemed like the story was over, that's when we discovered Pozu Kago. Pozu Kago is the alias of a Japanese blogger who's been running his own sort of small personal gaming blog since 2013 with a large focus on Pokemon. And that name he goes by, Pozu Kago, is actually a portmanteau of the word Pokemon and the Japanese word for wastebasket. Essentially, in my interpretation, he's calling himself Pokemon Trash, which immediately endeared me to him. Now, you might be wondering, how did we find this blog if it didn't show up on Google? Well, it turns out that Samuel, the same guy who hooked us up with the Japanese version and all that other stuff, he found this entry by simply Googling Pappy Van Poodle's Japanese name without quotation marks. And when you do that, when you Google Inuzo Toipu without quotation marks, a post emerges. This post is called Regarding Darumeshi Sports Shop. And in this post, 
Tozukago tells a story. Uh, he describes how after finishing Darumeshi Sports Shop, he decided he wanted to delete the game from his 3DS to free up space, but he wanted to manually extract his high scores from his save data and back them up on his computer. However, when he did that, tragedy struck. Pozukago's entire save game disappeared, requiring him to replay the game in its entirety. Does this sound familiar yet? <laughs> Now, from there, the rest of the post has a section called What I Learned, where Pozukago describes everything that happened differently on his second playthrough of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, including the fact that, quote, if you don't haggle, the story changes a little bit. <laughs> um, one of the bullets on this bulleted list says that you can progress without using story items, and then in a subsection of the bulleted list, he mentions this. There's a character called Inuzo Toipu who appears, or as you and I know him, Pappy Van Poodle. And the best part of this revelation is the fact that this post is from August 14th, 2013. 2013. August 14th, 2013 is just six days after Darumeshi Sports Shop came out in Japan. This post is from six days after Rusty's Real Deal Baseball was ever seen on Earth. Not even a full week, six days. This was it. This was the first ever documented occurrence of Pappy Van Poodle on the internet. And to me, there is just a beautiful, delicious poetry to this ending. I love the idea that in 2013, a Japanese gamer happened to lose his Rusty's Real Deal Baseball save through some tragic accidental circumstances, and that six years later, the exact same thing would happen to me with my apartment burning down. If Pozukago hadn't accidentally deleted his save file, he never would have been the first person to mention Inuzo Toipu on the internet, and if my apartment had never burned down, I never would have been able to make the video that you guys watched. So there's just a, I don't know, there's a lovely symmetry to that. But really, at the end of the day, I think the thing that I'm going to treasure the most about this experience is the connections I've made with other old-school Rusty's Real Deal Baseball super fans who were languishing in obscurity with me back when nobody knew what this game was. People like Soliton Medic, who is the guy who ripped the Rusty's Real Deal Baseball soundtrack to YouTube, where it got like 30 plays, 10 of which were me. People like Samuel Messner, who uncovered Pappy's Japanese name, helped me find examples of it on the internet, and who helped me just a ton with the video you're watching right now, including translating a lot of the Japanese text. And then people like MB, the guy who I told you about at the start of the story, who first remembered seeing a post on Miiverse, which kicked this entire journey off. And as one final cherry on top of all this, uh, when I reached out to MB, who's again, the guy who told me about the Miiverse post he remembered seeing, which is what kicked this entire video off, uh, I asked him how I should refer to him for this video. And he told me that his YouTube name was Mustachioed Bear, that MB was short for Mustachioed Bear. And if that name sounds familiar... Look at this. You think they would put him there if they completely forgot about him? He's the face of free-to-play games. If we, if we want a free-to-play representative in Smash Brothers, 100% it's going to be Rusty. So, Rusty is going to be in Smash. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye. And with that, I am done Pappy posting for the foreseeable future. That is the last piece of Pappy Van Poodle related content you will see on this channel uh, for the foreseeable future. I can't imagine I would ever have to make another Pappy video after that encyclopedia I just dropped on you. Three things to say real quick before we go. Thing number one, I have teamed up with one of my favorite artists, Hailfall, to make a Pappy inspired shirt. It's the first piece of merch I've ever put out on this channel. It's called Pappy Accident, which I think is a good name. And it's sort of a, a poodle head floating in the ambient void of space. This whole Pappy thing just seemed like the right sort of one-off event to do a limited time piece of merch around, if that makes sense. So it's a limited thing. There should be a link underneath this video or in the upper right corner of this video eventually, but right now, uh, for complicated YouTube reasons, it is processing. It takes a couple days to get it in there. So this all came together at the 11th hour, but it exists and it's real and you can buy it right now. And as a reward for sitting through this Goliath video, <laughs> I set up a coupon code uh, to give you 300 cents off of it called Charizard. It's kind of a reference to Charizard 300, I was thinking. I don't know if that plays, but don't tell anyone else about it. It's only for people who watch this entire video because I, I don't know how many of you there are, but you deserve some sort of <laughs> reward. Thing number two, uh, if you did sit through both of my Pappy videos, you that means you watched, Jesus, I don't know, 45 minutes of Pappy content probably? That's ridiculous. Um, if you did all that and haven't subscribed yet, uh, what's wrong with you? Please subscribe to this channel. I'm nearing a important landmark. Are you f***ing joking? I'm actually mad. At the time of this recording, I'm pretty close, like within arm's reach of hitting 300,000 subscribers, which would be a really big deal for me personally. So uh, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't. 
there's a link right here. And thing number three, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching these stupid Pappy videos. They've been a lot of fun to make. Have a good weekend. I stay up all night editing this, so I'm gonna go sleep. Have a good one. God, I'm tired. Jesus. Ugh.